Well, I'll be. The world will not continue spinning till Christmas at this rate, as Twitch, the ever so famous video sharing, or the streaming more correctly, platform has decreed that it's going to give people a second chance to get back onto the platform. Oh my, that's, that's rather incredible, isn't it? Aren't you, aren't you going a little bit far now, Twitch? I mean, sure, convicted murderers and rapists and criminals of all stripes are on Twitch, but people who have been eaten off the platform for mean words? Oh, Jesus. We really are throwing open the gates now, aren't we? As Twitch has updated its appeals process, allowing people who have been permanently suspended, which is gay-ass corporate for Yito Cheetoed off the platform, to reapply so long as they have not committed any <clears throat> high severity harms. High severity harms. I do love these modern day world salads that we've come up with. It's like, oh, oh, oh. It's, it's just a medium level harm. Okay, that's okay. You just, you know, slapped somebody or something. That's okay. So long as it's not high severity harm. You see, we're much like the Quran, where we're going to determine that you can indeed beat your wife with a belt, but the belt must only be yay thick. <laughs> oh, you don't keep that twitch. I look forward to you, um, defining high severity harm. <laughs> uh, obviously, they're not. So, this is, by and large, a bit of a move of desperation for the platform, as it's been seeing a lot of its largest content creators, its largest content creators, in fact, fleeing its platform for alternative competitors. And though even the people who aren't that large, but are on Twitch as a form of viable career option as a streamer, well, they're looking at ever more predatory and one-sided monetization options, with Twitch taking an ever larger cut and ever increasing the requirements for them to get any hiccups, any money out of it, and starting to wonder to themselves, am I getting screwed? And yes, yes, you, you are. You absolutely are. Twitch is a decidedly inferior alternative even to YouTube. Let that sink in for a second. <laughs> That's how bad it is. Twitch is a pretty awful platform in terms of its monetization, in terms of its terms of service, which are even worse than YouTube's yet again. And this has finally begun to bite them right on back in the ass again. And do not for a second believe their bullshit either. It's like, oh, we've only banned 3% of our millions of users. Oh, well, that's actually a rather large number, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Twitch is equal parts community and livelihood, and both these things are hugely important, they say, while staring worriedly at their bottom line. You know, this is a cynical attempt by what is at this point a failing platform to remain solvent straight up, in an ever more competitive environment. See, YouTube has the advantage of being the biggest boy on the block, and actually having been relatively clever in its constant expansion of monetization practices. Its most recent one, for example, is continuing to add more ads into live streams and making it very difficult to turn them off, and also to start uh, waging war against ad blockers, which according to YouTube itself, robs it of something like 40% of its revenue. If YouTube even manages to cancel out a couple percentage of these people using ad blockers, that is tens of millions of dollars in additional revenue. YouTube has, after struggling for a very long time, it's kind of solidified itself fairly well. And its reputation is, well, garbage, but premier amongst garbage. First amongst the least shall we say, whereas Twitch is decidedly at the end of that spectrum and has been for quite some time. This also follows a bit of an interesting recent trend that I've begun to notice. So, I, as many of you probably know, am considered by YouTube to be a little bit of a bad boy myself. And so, most of my videos and my channels, both of them, have gotten flagged rather, um, aggressively, shall we say. Especially after the hacking incident, where my recommendations on the lore channel were sliced literally down to a third. 75% of the amount of people who were recommended my videos before that incident simply just disappeared, just overnight which uh, was not at all suspicious in the slightest, of course. Nothing untowards going on there. But 
I've been noticing they're monetizing more streams recently, and they seem to be more lenient in what they allow onto their platform. Uh, case in point, there was recently, like literally yesterday, a rather large kerfuffle which I shan't talk about because YouTube has made it very clear that they do not appreciate people talking about this, where a couple of very large content creators talked about a subject, and their channels got flat out audited with YouTube going through their video step by step to find some infractions, and indeed, they did. They delivered three strikes to the channels in question, one of which was a warning and then two strikes, leaving them at death's door as the third and final one, excluding the warning, means your channel gets Yito Cheeto deletoed without the slightest feedback on your side. You don't get to say, hold on a second there. You don't get to lodge a complaint. You don't get to take them to court or anything. You simply just disappear like that. But here's the thing. As unfathomably awful as this is, as incredibly terrible as it is to have your entire livelihood, your career, years of work, rest on the whims of a single displaced intern, or one wrong word, I view it thusly. A man has been standing behind you with a loaded gun. You've heard it click click, and you've felt it press against the back of your head. And yet for some reason, he decided to shoot past you. It's, it's not much. Not much of a solid. It's, it's not a tremendous comfort, I know. But whereas YouTube would normally simply just have executed any channel that goes against their clear wishes, this time they elected to fire a warning shot. Again, called comfort for the channels in question, but it signals at least the tiniest, most microscopic hint of the softening in attitudes. I've been talking about this a couple times uh, else recently, where it does seem as if the platforms are beginning to look at a rising number of competitors, and some of them which actually do appear to be able to monetize themselves as well, like Rumble, for example, or who simply have extraordinarily large pocketbooks initially, like Kick, and they're wondering, huh, is our decade-long period of absolute domination beginning to come to an end? Are the alternatives finally becoming competitors? And if this is the case, well, we can no longer afford to simply just yeet anyone who displaces us, hoping that the rule of fear will continue to reign supreme, which it has up until this point. Perhaps this is wishful thinking, but like stuff like this, bearing in mind the potential political backlash of all this, the PR backlash. Imagine, for example, if Twitch unbanned somebody who was cancelled for whatever reasons. Racism, sexism, homophobia, God only knows these days, right? If Twitch brings them back, they are going to do so muy, muy quietly. But if somebody, the wrong people, pick up on it, well, they're going to look at that. Look, look what Twitch has done. They've reinstated a vile, racist, homophobic bigot. Is this the end of Twitch? Are they pro-homophobia now? The hit pieces will not end. This, make no mistake, is actually a relatively large risk for Twitch to take, even bearing in mind that they're going to be very, very selective. Because... There are people, and there have always been people, both on YouTube and on Twitch, that are simply above the law. I mean, Amaranth is a beautiful example of that. How many times has she violated the terms of service? How many times has she been suspended? And how many times has she returned right on back again? Yes, uh, there are certain people who are above this. But they are above it because of the sheer amount of traffic they bring. This is not a benefit of the doubt awarded to the vast majority of people. And the fact that there is now at least a potential path back for normal people is a very big step forward. Now, whether or not it amounts to anything, or whether this is merely just a PR gesture to go like, okay, yeah, we'll consider forgiving you if you, pray, if you ask very, very nicely, we'll have to wait and see. 
Now, I still maintain that what we really need is actually straight up internet uh, rights. We need actual laws protecting us. It needs to be like, no, 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 platform, you don't get to strike anybody. You are not the law here. You do not get to deliver even a warning to someone without passing it through legal measures because your terms of service are not legally enforceable. And since what you are doing can have real measurable effects on a person's livelihood, in other words, you are basically in effect firing them or inflicting, at the very least, absolute real and serious economical harm upon them, you must be able to do so from a legal perspective. We have protections against this in every other field of employment, even, even, um, was the word free term like a free term freelance that was the word i was looking for stuff has far more protections than a content creator and considering the fact that we are going to have to move more and more jobs online in the face of automation and ai we're going to need to be able to actually protect those jobs as well and this is one tiny tiny step in the right direction Though I'd like to hold off on any actual full-throated praise of Twitch for a few months yet to see if they actually, again, deliver on any of it. Until next time, I've been Arch. Thank you very much for watching, and I do hope to see you all again soon. Have a good day.